Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Active Turnkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister, and I have the Tom Olson here. And uh, so Tom is the the market guru now for both Northwest Indiana and Pensacola. Uh, and so if you if you saw our last podcast... I am not self-proclaimed, just so you yeah, guys Yeah, I'm calling him a guru. And if you saw our last podcast, he was kind of... He was kind of flexing on his uh, really yeah on his geographical oh. knowledge oh. of the Pensacola market. Now that he knowledge. knows it, he's just flexing on it, telling you, "Hey, this is this is the areas you want to avoid. This is the ups and downs, and it's good if you know this is the kind of stuff you want." That's what this whole podcast is about, Jared. Flexing, trying to help <laughs> help these people, help uh, our listeners, yeah, know what we know. That's true. We had. Right. The first time we sent out our first deal about, you know, about uh, Pensacola, you know, everybody wanted to know everything about Pensacola at that right. moment. And yeah. so I guess it helps to be able to provide that information. Sure. Yeah. We're, I think we're going to be selling more houses down there soon. I think we are. We've got a couple more in the pipe. They sell for a little bit more money than they sell for up here. I, I will do. say that. Actually, so, yeah. So instead of like the 100, 120, you know, sometimes we have houses a little bit lower than 100 here, but mm. they're... More like 150, Ish. 180. Yeah, sure. yeah, could be. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, if you're interested in that market, we might have property soon. A little teaser there for you guys. Uh, so, but today we are continuing. We're back again for another podcast. And today we're going to talk about a needful. This is needful. This is needful. This I'm is sure. important. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to read it because it's a little bit longer title than we typically do, but, it, but it's important. How to choose a real estate agent for your rentals. Yeah, I I like this topic a it lot. Is. It's important. I have used real estate agents my whole career. Mm-hmm. Um, we buy a lot of houses off the MLS. We do, <laughs> uh, and there's still deals out there. I a lot of people don't think there's deals yeah. out there, but there are still deals on the MLS. And I think it's important to work with a real estate agent that is going to be uh, workable. <laughs> That's yeah. going to work with you and not against you. You know. The problem is, and and it's kind of like, it's anything, it's anything, but realtors, I think, even get a worse name than than most. Um, And, but I think, I I find this to be true in almost any industry. You have 30% of people that just absolutely are horrible. Hmm. They are the worst, the scum of the earth, the worst type of people you'd ever want to meet. And it doesn't matter what industry they're in, you're going to have those 30% of people that are just horrible. You got the 30% of people that try to do a good job sometimes. Sometimes they're off. Yeah. They're not really. They're they're good. They're bad, whatever. Like, they're just average, right? Average people. Yeah. And then you have 30% of people that are superstars, that mm-hmm. are just like, they're on it. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. Nobody is, except for Jesus. Uh, and, um, you know, but they are really on it. They're trying. They have a niche. They know what they're doing. They answer their phone. They respond to emails. Yeah. They, they they do what they're supposed to do. Um, but we've kind of boiled it down and, you know, started thinking, hey, if somebody else was trying to find a mm-hmm. real estate agent, mm-hmm. you know, what are some things that, you know, what are some tips or what are some things that they would maybe want to know? Um, and how do I, maybe, maybe some questions I should yeah. ask, yeah. you know, some, a real estate agent. Um, and so that's what this podcast is going to be about. Yeah, and I think if you're, this is even more helpful out of state. Oh, absolutely. Out of your sure. own market. Yep. I mean, it's one thing if you're local, you may pick up, you may know someone, you may see a lot of different uh, different things going on in your own market, and you just kind of have an idea on who's making stuff happen. Um, but when you're out of state, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it is a lot of what you're trying to do can be dependent upon that. That relationship. Now, again, we could do a whole other one on how to choose a good wholesale guy, wholesaler to work with, you know, because uh, you, you that that's the thirty percent rules apply there mm-hmm. as well. But um, but uh, particularly to an agent, and, and if you're if you're looking to invest out of market, you need to find a good one. Yeah, no, I, I think I think having an agent is 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 great, and mm-hmm. I think it's 
I think it's important on the front end when you buy, and I think it's important on the back end when you sell. And I think it's great to have one person that could help you throughout that whole thing. Um, so, Jared, what are some things that you can think of that you would, right off the bat, you would want if you were buying, and you you do buy with an agent. So, what are some things that you look yeah. for? You know, I, I think experience is really helpful. Um, experience in what? Uh, in in real estate. Okay. Uh, I I think I I would like for them to have been part of deals. Um, uh, again, they don't have to be. I think any kind. I think construction experience might help, or or uh, all that different stuff. But I, I would at least like them to be to have done deals because um, they may not have you all say the answers. That, that you wouldn't you say that you would like for them to have done deals? Do you mean like I mean if they're they're an agent, they're they're a realtor, yeah. like they've done deals? You would think like they have helped people buy and sell houses. Yeah. Um, are you talking about that kind of deals? Or are you talking about like rentals specifically? No, not necessarily. Uh, it could help. Um, it certainly can help. Um, I think it's important to know the difference. There's there can be a difference. Um, uh, like if I'm buying in a market, it would be important for me to know that hey, I'm paying more higher end retail in this part of town than over here, where maybe I might get a little bit more bang for my buck. You know, that might be important to me. I'm thinking volume. I mean, I think it's really important for them to to just know the market. Uh, and, and they're aware when it's shifting, when it's changing. That's good. Um, they're alert to to changes. Um, I do want I do want them to give me an honest opinion, um, and they're not afraid to say no or to disagree. Uh, and, and so um, I, I certainly don't want them to tell me what I want to hear when it comes to uh, an agent. I, I would prefer for them to. I, I, and usually, I, um, I Tom, you do this, and I try to do the same. Hey, what do you think? I, I really want to know, hey, what do you think? What do you think about this offer? Or where do you think this price, the range is? Where do you think this thing could go? Just mm-hmm. feedback from, from their experience sure. um, in sure. this area. Um, and because, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, with, if, with what we do, flippers, for instance, sometimes we may have our own idea on value. Um, our wholesaler may say this is worth 200 Well, we know it's worth 180 um, I need my real estate agent to tell me the same thing. I need her to say, no, you know what, Jared, it's not going to be 200 It's going to be 180 If you do, and sometimes based upon experience, she can say, Jared, if you add this, this, and this, mm-hmm. you're sure. going to get 180 So that's So that's different, I think. I think, I actually think sometimes a fix and flip agent, a great fix and flip agent, is not always the best agent mm-hmm. to also buy a rental on. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Because I think they're looking at it from a completely different perspective, and they're looking at, oh, I want to be in the nice area of town, mm-hmm. not necessarily the area that's going to make me the most money. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of times, you know, what what's discouraging? I think I think you have to you have to talk about the good and the bad when you talk about this, because I think the majority, and I think this is probably over sixty percent of realtors, the only thing they're focused on is that commission check, <laughs> and how much money they're going to make. Mm-hmm on said deal yeah. so and i think that when it comes to rentals you know you're normally not buying rentals in the most expensive part of town mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know so they're already going to be like well this is now a under two hundred thousand dollar house versus <laughs> this four hundred thousand dollar house that i would love for you to be buying instead yeah, absolutely um and so i think it's i think it's i think it's sometimes it's it's a little bit of a double-edged sword mm-hmm. to kind of like to understand what you're getting. I think the biggest, most important thing for me is I want to know what I'm getting out of that person. Mm-hmm. I want to know, um, do they have experience in rentals? I, I would prefer them, them actually have some experience yeah. in rentals. Absolutely. If I'm going to use them as a rental, if I'm going to use them to buy mm-hmm. a rental, I mm-hmm. want them to have some experience. Um, I want them to, I, and I think having connections, well, you kind of brought this up a little bit, but yeah. like having construction experience I think is important, but I think what's more important is yeah. Having connections to yeah. contractors and having Absolutely. connections to to um, handymen or plumbers mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. roofers or whatever the case is that's a very important valuable yeah. for me that's super valuable because you you know how important you know referrals are versus just like looking somebody up in the phone book yeah um, so to me. I also, I'm, I'm going to ask him questions like, are you a property manager? You know, like, mm. and does it, nest, I, I, I actually, it's, it, it's interesting. It's, it is rare. It, it, it does happen. You know, for instance, you know, we have brokers, we have realtors that work here 
And, you know, my wife is a realtor and my wife's a broker and she, you know, she can help people buy houses. Mm -hmm. um, and she is part of the property management company. So she can help with that. She also has connections, but she's also has, she, she's done it. She's done it all. Like that's a very rare. Sure. So what we're not, what we're not trying to express to you is that's what you have to have yeah. in every circumstance. Mm -hmm. It's, it's actually very rare. I, and it's, it's interesting because the realtor that I use now, out of state for me personally is not my property manager. Mm -hmm. When I'm buying, you know, mm -hmm. now when I'm selling, I kind of use a couple different people mm -hmm. um, depending on the exit strategy and how, yeah. how we got to that point. But when it comes to buying, um, he, I, 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 it's, I've had a hard time getting him on the same page as me and trying to understand what I'm doing. And it almost is like he doesn't have time because he's so busy being a property manager. Yeah. So you kind of really, these are the important questions that I want to ask is, are you, are you a property manager um, or can you connect me to contractors, to property managers, yeah. to handymen? Do you have experience in rentals? Because I think experience in rentals is different than just experience in selling a house. Mm -hmm. Because if I have experience in rentals, I know the difference between if I'm going to get $800 a month for rent yeah. or $1,200 a month for rent or $1,500 a month for rent. And if I'm going to buy this house for 150, mm -hmm. I sure better be close to that $1,500 a month for rent or $1,400 a month for rent than if yeah. I'm buying like a house for 80, then, then it doesn't matter. Like $800 is just fine, you sure. know, for, for rent. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I think, um, for, I, I think it's good when you, the investor know that information, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it's really good when you're Runs not telling page. your yeah. agent, Hey, I can get a lot more than that. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, for them, for you to be on the same, so that way they're, when they're looking for deals, they already know your criteria. They know what the numbers are and they're like, Hey, this is the perfect deal for you. Um, so yeah, I, I cause my experience with that. most realtors, I'll be honest with you. Most realtors I talk to, they're always trying to get me to pay more. They're, that, and that's yeah. the thing. Like they're always trying to get me to pay more than, and I know I can get this or, or like, again, I've got experience doing this gotcha. and I believe that this is what it's worth. And like this, that's just what it's worth to me. Yeah. So, um, so th well, that's, because, that's what you have to be careful of. But why we know that they say it's worth more, but we know why it's not worth more to us. Correct. Because we know what we got to put into it. And so it would be nice for that agent to know what we do. Right. Exactly. So if they know, if they could estimate if, you know, and that's communication. So but in a perfect know, world, that's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> in a perfect world, you'd want that top 10%. Yeah. I just don't think it's reasonable to think that everybody sure. that you work with is going to be, and sometimes you can train them and sometimes yeah. you can, uh, you can think about, I think the other thing to ask them or to think about is what other value can they bring to you? There, mm -hmm. there is other values that, um, agents can really bring to you. Um, if you think about it, you know, we talked about some of the values, you know, their connections is mm -hmm. a huge value. Mm -hmm. Um, their experience can be a huge value. Um, but how well do they know the market? Yeah. You That's know, right. have they seen, have they been in business for 10 years or so? Do they know, have they seen the ups and downs? Are they really in tune with the market or do they just sell a couple houses each year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, there, there's lots of other values that, that they can bring, um, with different connections, maybe local business owners, or maybe they have connections with the mayor's office, or maybe they have some other types of value that they can bring you that, you know, you don't even know what that could be unless you ask. Um, you know, we talked about how well do they know their market? Do they have connections to lenders? I think if you're a turnkey, if you're a turnkey, like I think, and maybe you already have all, your own lender, you know, obviously if you've worked with us, you have our list of the lenders that we recommend. Um, talked about handyman. Do they know sellers? I think sometimes they, yeah. they, they actually know other, maybe wholesalers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they know other turnkey providers. Maybe they know other people that may be able to help you be able to purchase more, more houses outside of the MLS. Well, I, uh, so, I mean, I, I, I work with Becky. Uh, she helps me acquire properties for my own, for my own portfolio. And one of the things that she's even said is she knows the agents she's working with. Um, and she has worked with some sellers before based upon, you know, maybe if, if they're high mm -hmm. volume sellers. So a lot of times that experience in bidding, you can see, you know, this person may be more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, you got some people, you know, that they're not budging. They're not doing anything. They're going to be insulted if mm -hmm. you if you come below uh, some agents, you know, if you come under, you know, $10,000 under the list, it's insulting. You know, they'll tell you how insulting it is. Um, and so, you know, in that part, you may just decide not to bid at all because Maybe. of the agent. Maybe. You know, 
Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we may do it anyway, but I mean, yep. you get the idea. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Some of these things are predicated on an agent, not even the, the seller. Yep. I no, mean, if I'm a seller, I wouldn't That's literally that. my next point, Jared. It, oh, are they man. willing to make lowball offers? Wow. And I think that that's something that I want out of an agent. Like mm-hmm. I, I want to know, yeah. are, if, if this house is listed for 150, are you willing to make an offer for 110? Like, you know, and it may not go through and it's fine if it doesn't, but like at the end of the day, um, and most of the time that's not the case. You sure. know, most of the time we're looking at a house and maybe we're offering five or 10 or maybe, maybe 20 less than asking price. But I mean, we're not trying to purposely insult people, but this sure. is what we're willing to pay and we yeah. need to let them know. I will say during a foreclosure buzz or during a time where there's a lot of bank foreclosures, a lot of houses sell for 50 cents on the dollar. Yeah. Um, of what they're, you know, what the list price is. So, you know, because I've purchased so many houses, those, I mean, over a thousand homes we mm-hmm. have purchased mm-hmm. for probably 60% of list price or less. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, you know, like I know that not in today's market, you know, no. 2022 maybe, but you know, that time will come again um, at some point where the low ball offers are going to be very valuable. And it's, it's, it's inverted now, like you said. And so, uh, people are insulted by a lower offer, but actually your list price is insulting. Yes. It's not worth 150 I agree. Yes. <laughs> so the fact that I'm coming in low does not mean that I'm mm-hmm. insulting you. It means that you're no one can pay your price. Yep. Uh, and so uh, so sometimes it's just kind of, that's real estate in a, in a way. Yeah. But but that's that's nice and fun. Something else I like, and the, the guy I'm working with in Florida actually has helped with this a little bit, but um, having pocket listings, having mm. knowing other agents that maybe get those listings yeah. way before they're they're going to sell them, and trying to they, they try to like move them before they, they post them on the MLS is another mm-hmm. cool thing. Or they do they know wholesalers? You know, like a lot of people are on people's lists, and they they go and they will help them. And so just asking them your your realtors yeah. these kind of types of questions. Um, again, every realtor is not going to hit every one of these boxes. And even your top 30% is not going to hit every one of these boxes. Yeah. But I, what I'm looking for at the end of the day is the value. Yeah. Can they give me a little bit more value than the other realtors? Because honestly, most realtors think that all they need to do is just show you a property, write an offer, yeah. and and close a property. Like There's a lot more work that, that can really go in. There's a lot more valuable... And I think the other thing that I like as well is an agent that I believe knows the market enough on the retail side as well. And most agents, it's easier to find an agent that understands yeah. the retail market sure. than it is to find an agent that understands the yeah. the um, wholesale market or the you know the buying criteria for a, um, a rental. Yeah. But like, and why? And why it's good? Right. right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. most agents don't don't understand that. They don't know that. Right. Um, it was funny. We were even bringing an, an agent a local agent through one of the houses that we were looking at to buy. And she was asking all these questions. She had no idea, you know, what we're thinking when we go through a property. So that's super valuable, but can can they help you sell? And will they also, I don't think they have to be like the top agent in in the area. Um, But I do think that they should really, you know, have some keen eye on being able to get the most money. Um, What is most discouraging to me Mm -hmm. is sometimes you get investor friendly um, realtors who they're investor friendly. They're willing to do the low ball offers. They work really hard on the buy side, Mm -hmm. but then on the sell side, they're kind of lazy and they kind of like, they just like, well, let's just put it below market value. Let's not, you know, and because we'll make it sell faster. Now I'm telling you like most of the time, (laughs) 90 plus times out of a hundred, it's going to be well worth your while to spend an extra five or 10 grand on this property and get twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more for that listing. So please don't fall into that trap of selling below market value when it comes time to go sell. You're losing a big part of your profit yeah. of the entire deal. So well, if they know market, that, that's like, a big deal. Especially like a market like it is now. There's mm-hmm. no reason not to do that. And in the end, uh, as a seller, especially if you've d- purchased a property and done a rehab, you've done the hard lifting, the mm-hmm. heavy lifting. There's no reason to leave money on the table. Um, and it, you know the right buyer they want it, and that, that's kind of the thing that, that you know we've heard, have heard is I've heard in the past is you know well other other properties haven't sold around that. I'm like I don't care, you know what I mean? You know that, that they're to if I believe and if I'm the seller and I believe it's worth this based upon sold comps in the area, you know I, I want to. That's my price. I, I mean I, I appreciate like I said I want someone to tell me something. Mm-hmm. I want that perspective. Oh, yeah. But I also. You know, there's some up, some times where it's like, hey, I, I think this is the right price. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. You know, one thing, Tom, for me is, um, as you're building your team, 
and we talk about this a lot with property management, uh, you can't do what you want to do in real in rentals out of market, in market out of market, really, uh, without that property manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you you'll lose the deal eventually. I like to say that you'll lose it eventually. Maybe not right away, but eventually it, it's going to go downhill and with poor management. But I really want to have an agent that I can trust. Mm-hmm. And we've seen this with, so what, what often happens is because of what we do and because we offered the Burr deal for so long, when we when it became really difficult to do that, some of our clients, you know, they, they liked it. And who doesn't like a good Burr deal? And mm-hmm. what, we, what we saw, not all the time, but frequently, was an agent, they, there was a, a buyer who'd find an agent and that agent would show them a house virtually. <laughs> and inevitably there would be some major issues with these properties. We'd see buyers buying them, you know, with, through their agent and mm-hmm. there'd be major issues. And, you know, if, and, and it's like, clearly I would have never bought that house if you would have disclosed that to me. If you would have told me that there's some major mm-hmm. foundational issues and now my budget's double, mm-hmm. triple what I had intended. You know, so I want an agent who's going to give me the story, give me the scoop, what's going on. Um, and so like from Olson Group, our perspective is when I when we sell a house, when an investor comes in, if, they, if they've never seen it, I don't want them to come in and say, you sold me this? This is the property? Right. Yep. We want them to be happy with their investment. And we, you know, we don't want to mislead anyone. And mm-hmm. that's what I want from my agent. I want an agent that, that will... I don't want to be shocked by what I see in a negative way. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I don't mind being being shocked on the other side, uh, pleasantly surprised. But uh, I, I don't want that. I, I would want my agent to disclose as much as possible. N- not that they're perfect, but you, you get the you get where I'm going. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because most of the things that we're talking about here, you could also say about a good wholesaler. Like what that's, I that's, want that's true. when I when I'm buying from a wholesaler. I kind of would like these same things. And that's part of the, how we started what, our whole business, yeah. you know, six, seven, eight years ago, yeah. trying to figure out how do, can we add more value? Mm-hmm. How can we connect them to contractors? How can we maybe help them get the contracting done? How can we mm-hmm. be a property manager for them? How can we add more value? Um, and it's interesting because just like realtors think that sometimes all they have to do is show a house, put a house under contract, mm-hmm. and then close a deal. Mm-hmm. Wholesalers, I think, do the same thing sometimes. Yeah. Wholesalers think sometimes, and sometimes wholesalers are making twenty, thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and they're doing nothing. They're, mm-hmm. and, and they don't want to provide any value. Yeah. They don't want to provide anything any other than numbers, just like the fact that pictures. they brought you a property. Yeah. Um, which, if you ask me, I think the realtor in that point is way more valuable sure. than a wholesaler mm-hmm. because the realtor is getting paid less. And that's, that's why true. I believe like true. there's like a difference. If you read the book, Go Giver, mm-hmm. like your true value to somebody is the difference in how much money it costs somebody to get your services mm-hmm. versus the value that you brought to them. Yeah. So, um, you know, and this is why I believe that, you know, I, and this is why I really do believe in realtors. And I really do think that realtors, you know, can be super valuable mm-hmm. to your business. Um, and, and I don't think that, and again, like I don't want to talk, I'm trying not trying to talk negative as much on the realtors because some of them really do try. They just, a lot of people just, a lot of realtors just don't know this. Sure. Um, and that's what I want to caution you. Like a lot of realtors, they think that they know how to sell you a property, but they have no experience in rentals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you can, if you could find the ones that have experience in rentals, if you can find the ones that can hit some of these points, um, I think that you'll be better off. I just have a couple more. Go ahead, Jerry. Well, no, you, you, you talked about knowledge. And so like every once in a while, you'll see like an agent maybe post something on Facebook Hey, I'm looking for a three bed, one bath for 800 rent. And it's like, <laughs> and they don't even know that that's not even no. I no. mean, unless you're an apartment or a one one or something yeah. like now. Now maybe they're trying to help someone in need. Maybe okay, yep. but typically, like, and frankly, like for a company like ours, where you know we have investors, we we're responsible to. We have lenders that lend on our deals, and then we have our end buyer. I have an owner I'm responsible to. I mm-hmm. can't I can't rent a property for eight hundred dollars a three bed. I mean, there's I, I rarely a three bedroom for sure. Yeah. Two bedrooms, I think there's maybe maybe yeah. it's a maybe unless it's one of these rented properties that's not yeah. you know rehabbed exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. that we talked about yeah, but um. I mean, again, like it, go, it goes back to the same things of, you know, do you know this person? You mm-hmm. like them? Do you trust them? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, th- th- that's kind of what my last two things kind of are all, really all about um, is like, do they have time to serve you? That's good. You know, some real estate agents are really good and they're good for a reason. Yeah. And they really don't have time for you. Yeah. Um, and you have to understand that 
a good agent for a, an investor is going to have to spend a little bit more time mm. on some of these deals. Yeah. Um, and they're probably going to have to put in several offers to get one accepted sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they have to be willing to go through that process. So understanding, are they willing to go through that process? Um, do they have time to respond to you? And I would even try to check, like, how communicative are they when yeah. you reach out to them? Um, are they reaching back out to you? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's sometimes for Becky, I think sometimes it's the opposite. Like she's reaching out and she can't even get a owner sometimes to respond when she has an offer on the table and Man. she's trying to like get people to respond and say, you like, think that's the one you call. would think, right. You, you know, um, wow. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. but so like that, I, I guess that's, that's the last thing. And then, and then one thing I would ask of my agent, if you haven't done this already, if you have a real estate agent, I would ask them. You know, create your own criteria. We talked about criteria mm -hmm. on the last podcast. Yeah. But create a little bit of criteria, what you're looking for, what areas you're looking for. And you know what's great is they can set you up on an automatic, um, you know, f list where mm -hmm. you get emailed every day that there's maybe a new property that hits mm -hmm. your criteria. And, you know, this is what, this works out great for me. Yeah. Um, and I get, I'm, I'm on three little separate lists in Pensacola and I get them set to me every single day. And um, there are days I don't have time to look at them. Mm -hmm. if, if I don't have time to look at them, no sweat off of anybody's back. You know, it's an automatic thing. Um, but most of the time I'm looking at them and I'm send, I, I snapshot a picture, send it to my agent and be like, hey, what about this one? What do you think about this one? You think I, we can put an offer on this house? Um, and uh, it, it, it's something that you can do super quick. And um, it doesn't take a lot of time from your agent, but it's something that if you'll do with your agent, you'd be shocked at how 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 quickly you can actually get those deals and you got to be the first pe people making offers you got to be that you yeah. know you got to be at the table if you're not at the table somebody else is going to be at the table and some and that that deal is going to be gone especially in the market that we're in right now you know it's interesting you say that because i think uh oftentimes the expectation is hey i'm calling why aren't you answering and uh meanwhile you're not to hopefully you're not their only client <laughs> uh yeah, you would hope you know you, <laughs> I mean, you hope that they're busy enough that and not dependent on you um and, and so it's really important but you know you also need to be able to 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 be reciprocate that communication mm -hmm. um and not hold them hostage while they're trying to work for you because the thing is you know if you're not going to do that if you're not serious enough then, then they're, you're going to lose a good agent mm -hmm. because we've seen that we've heard agents like firing their clients like they won't work with you because oh, yeah. because you're not responsive or you don't communicate or you kind of leave them in, in limbo or you're dishonest mm -hmm. um, in in what you're doing and so I mean we've seen all of that um, and so um, I have an investor I'm thinking of right now Jared I just can't get it out of my mind I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I have I don't know who he's thinking. <laughs> Uh, maybe I should, but, but, uh, no, he's no longer an investor. Oh, well, well, there you go. I, so, but, but, but he end, still owes us money uh Oh, because he you. didn't pay the last couple months of Yikes. things that, you know, happened from the property management. I just saw a bill come through today. I'm like, and we're talking like six months ago. Well, in the end, that's, that is what you want in, in an agent. They're busy. Yep. Uh, but that, that's one thing we find because just because, you know, maybe I have a break doesn't mean that they're. If and I, agent, I, I'm glad working. you brought that up. That's a great point. Honestly, like I think we talk a lot about like what expectations you should have of other people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, I mean, let's just be honest. Like there, there should be expectations of you, the investor. You mm -hmm. should also have integrity. You should also pay That's your good. bills. You should also communicate. And again, like that, that wasn't the purpose of mm -hmm. me making that statement. It was just kind of like uh, something I thought about quickly. But because uh, because Becky just experienced this with an investor who had a property that um, I, I think the guy didn't get back to him for like three days when they had an offer. Um, I, 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 and I, I don't think it was that big of a deal. It's just, that was just, it's, it's, that's an odd time for an investor not to communicate, right? When they have an offer on the table and you're using this agent to try to help you sell the property. Um, but I, and that's kind of where I was going. Like, do they push you on communication or do yeah. you have to push them on communication? And, or is there like a nice flow? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, do you kind of understand how quickly they can respond and do they have time for you? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I always think proper expectations are, are the best. Like if you can set proper expectations with that investor, with that investor friendly realtor, what most people would say, or, you know, realtor to help you find rentals. Um, I think having a good real working relationship and making sure it works for you both mm -hmm. um, is 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 always the most beneficial way to, to, to make a relationship work of any kind, really. Yeah, I, I think in that in the scenario you're presenting, where you know the the uh, seller didn't respond for three days, you know, 
Uh, another he could have been on vacation. He could have been on the country. I don't know. Could have, <laughs> could have been. But also keep in mind that you know if you have a good agent, they care what other agents think. You know they want exactly. to be a good, yep. mm-hmm. a good agent to all parties. And and um, we've had great agents over the years before Becky mm-hmm. that we worked with, and that was one thing they were concerned about. Hey, I got to I got to respond. Hey, I I you know uh, I don't want to mislead or I don't want to. You know they're very concerned about the community around them, and and it's mm-hmm. just like everything else that you were talking about. And that's the kind of agent you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so, so we covered quite a bit of ground here. This isn't exhaustive. I just think we need to do a podcast, Jack. Uh, Jack, Jared. I, I don't know how I called you, Jack. Jack, um, hit the road, Jack. It's like a um, TV show yeah, character. Yeah, but uh, about expectations of. I think we've done one or two in the mm-hmm. past of expectations of owners, but because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think that's really what people want. People want like knowledge of how do I go out and help other people, but they also kind of should know what they should have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe maybe you're not ready for it. Maybe you don't have time right. to be able to uh, de- develop, um, you know, what you need to do. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I mean, that, and that's, again, I, honestly, that's kind of goes back to our podcast and the whole reason why we do what we do. We mm-hmm. build rental portfolios for investors because mm-hmm. we know that there's people that are really busy. And I'm, honestly, the guy that didn't get back to Becky is a great guy. He's yeah. really a good guy. Now, the guy that owes us money, like, that's a whole different story. Um, not, not great. Uh, okay. But, uh, but, uh, <laughs> okay. but. You know, it's pretty bad when you have a tenant that doesn't pay, but when you have an owner that doesn't pay, like, I don't know, that's a whole nother level. Mm. Um, but uh, but anyway, so, and again, like, 99.9 out of a hun- out of 100, um, I think we have, that's one owner that mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. have out of, you know, 400 doors or something that we're managing or something crazy like that. Um, so, um, you know, but I, I, there is expectations that we all should have. We all should, ho- you know, be responsible for what we're supposed to mm-hmm. um, be responsible for. And, um, you know, I love, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember which book it was. I think it was either 10X Rule or Good to Great, where it basically talks about when you admit that you've done something wrong or you have a part in this to play. It's like a switch turns on and you can, like, now make change and now you can actually growth, make things yeah. and you can have growth but, yeah that's good. um we're getting totally off topic now like we never have that never happens rabbit on trails. this podcast Jared. no rabbit trails yeah totally no we're wearing that one out right yes we're <laughs> no it's done no uh no i i really appreciate you guys joining us today and we hope this yeah. brings you value uh we've seen both sides of the coin what mm-hmm. a great value a real estate agent can bring and we've seen what a very poor person who is focused on commission and sales and how it could just be awful um you know, mm-hmm. quite often, you know, really quickly, quite often, we, we recommend you uh, come to visit our operation, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Maybe you should meet up with your agent sometime. You got and, it. And meet yep. them in person. Find out how they talk to people. Are they respectful or are they a jerk? Mm-hmm. And find out is because if they're a jerk to other people, maybe they're that you know they're waitress or or something like that. They're, they're, there's a good chance they can be That's a jerk to your people. In your also, community. why we come tell you to meet us and Absolutely. see Jared and see how big of a is jerk he Jared is. Is Jared a jerk or not? <laughs> Confirm it. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, most of you who've come visit us would say absolutely. Absolutely. Not. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> so with that being said, we do have a, an event coming up called the uh, Real Estate Free For All event. If you're interested in that, um, you can email Jared at jared at biolsongroup.com mm-hmm. and he can get you information for that. Or you can just go to the Good Success website, goodsuccess.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can, you know, it, it's a free event. No, but you don't have to pay for it. But what I do, the tickets are going to sell out this year. Um, we can only sell 100 tickets. I shouldn't say sell, but we can only let people have 100 mm-hmm. tickets because we only have 100 people that will, um, you know, that can fit in our venue. But we have a lot of fun. The whole purpose of the thing is to number the number one reason is to have fun. So if you would like to have fun, this is the event to come. Number two is for connections. Yeah. It's for um, you know, some of our lenders will be here. Some of our private lenders will be here. I think we're going to do some podcasts about raising private money here mm-hmm. in the future as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But some of my personal private lenders will be here. Um, some of our, we've even had the lenders that, that we recommend to you um, that have been to, at some of yeah. these events in the past. Um, and then there's other outside of the box education that we normally do to try to help. We're even doing a couple episodes on uh, episodes, a couple uh, sp- speakers will be talking about crypto. And I know that's, mm. that's a super hot topic oh, yeah. right now. And it's something that I'm also doing for people. I'm doing these free crypto calls um, for people. And you can find out more information about that on the Good Success website as well. Um, but um, if you're interested in that, again, you can just email Jared and he can get you the information or you can go to our website, goodsuccess.com and get more information about the free for all uh, event. We would love to have, we, 
like I said, we, we will be full. We will be full. So mm-hmm. like it, it it just depends on if you get your ticket or not. I think we already have about thirty people signed up for it now, and it's September thirtieth through October second, twenty twenty two. I know that people may be listening to this later than that, but it's true. Anyways. Um, that's well, really going to do it for today's episode, right, well, Jerry? Don't forget, we do build rental portfolios yes, for sir. investors. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go to our website. Um, you can get on our buyers list. Uh, you can go to our website at buyolsongroup.com. Um, so you can get on our buyers list. You can get our deals as they come out. Um, you can also schedule a time to connect a call with me if you're interested in learning more and you're not you're not familiar with Olson Group. You can do that, um, and you can e- or you can email me at Jared at buyolsongroup.com as well. Um, and that's Olson O L S O N. And the um, website is buy like you buy. Yeah, B U I. Everybody that's listening is a future buyer from Olson Group. There you so go. B U I Olson Group Network. By Olson Group, right? Yeah, by Olson, by Olson Group. Group. Dot com. Not network. <laughs> I forgot. There's no, no, no network on that. So, so by Olson Group. Dot com, and you can get on our buyers list. Yep, that's right. Connect with Jared, and you can see more about our company mm-hmm. on the website as well. The core values, all that stuff. And so, thank you for joining us today. Hope we brought you value. Give us a thumbs up, five stars. You know, subscribe, share, like, all of those things. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Active Turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. Thanks, guys. God bless. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.